I'm going to call it 740 on the horse. But you know, Mayor, I, I did make it out somewhere in that time. Right. Because I knew much round figure. I knew we wouldn't be done at seven o'clock. We never are. Nah, yeah. Okay. So right. anyways, uh, thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, if you guys uh, have any cell phones, turn them off or turn them on vibrant. We do greatly appreciate that. And what we are gonna do is we're just kind of tonight we're gonna go down, we're gonna start at the left and we're gonna end up all the way around. We're gonna let everybody have a chance to talk, introduce yourselves, tell them a little bit about you know what they do, who they are, things of that nature. And then uh, we'll do uh, questions and comments at the end of the evening. So if you have any questions for anybody in particular or how things work or why things are done the way they are, you can ask them then and we'll do the best to get an answer for you. Um, so we will start off with our newest council member, Mr. Bill Lindsay. My name is William Lindsay. They call me Bill. Uh, I was elected in November. The, uh, I guess the only thing I have uh, to my name is I uh, did run the police levy. Uh, last year, and the citizens agreed with me, and they voted to pass the police levy so we could bring our deputies back. I am a big supporter of fire and police. The, I am a retired firefighter from many years ago, and uh, pretty much all I can say, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds. My name is Ethan Reynolds. Uh, this is my second term on city council. Just got reelected uh, last November. I was elected. Uh, 19 years old, so I've been doing this now for four years, going on four and a half. It's kind of crazy how time flies with these guys. Uh, that's really it. I mean, nothing. Else. nothing. Yeah. You want to talk about your breath? Uh, <laughs> sure. It's on fire. Go <laughs> <laughs> good, go good. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, I am Bill McIntyre, Michigan State, the Final Four. So there's that. Uh, uh, you make it all the way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, Bill. Does that make you? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody who's here today. This is, I think, one of the best meetings we have of the year because it's an opportunity for everyone to introduce themselves, talk about themselves, and what we do as a city. Um, I noticed that Mr. Bridge in the packet they gave out, there's a whole bunch of topics that we're going to be discussing. These are the same topics that we've been talking about really over the last four years, the big issues that we face as a city to help us move forward. Some of the hurdles, some of the long-lasting effects that we have, um, where we are as a city as far as being a bedroom, small town community, where we are as far as trying to grow and, uh, and um, bring in more jobs um, in this new economy that we have. If you have any questions, I know the high school kids are still here, if you have any questions, please let us know. You probably notice that there is a mayor up here and also someone called a city manager. That probably seems a bit confusing because you always hear that the mayor is the one that, one that runs the town. And um, having a city manager form of government is something that really started here in the Miami Valley. And with that, I will let our mayor, Mike Lowry, talk to you about the intricacies of the mayor city manager form of government. <laughs> Mike. As the mayor, I was to run this meeting for the most part. And these guys, we all, we all do our best to to come up with the best decision of what we think is best suited for the citizens of New Carolina, and it's, you know, it's citizens. But the day-to-day -day operations, as he was saying, it sounds a little confusing, is Randy, the city manager, is, I mean, and obviously he has people that works on him for different departments, but he's the one who, who goes home every day with a headache from the amount of work that he goes through. Uh, he is a busy guy, he's, he, he's non-stop, he's on the weekends he's working. Um, but yes, he's the city manager, he's, he's the big, uh, he's a big pusher behind the uh, city and, and things that are getting done. But anyways, my name is Mike Lowry. Um, I've been on city council for four years. I just got reelected to my second term as well as Mr. McIntyre, <coughs> Mr. Reynolds. And I, I love Nicola. I've lived here all my entire life. Uh, a lot of you may have seen me from the Heritage Flight Festival or the ball drop. I'm a big uh, supporter of that and do a lot of work with that. We've got a really good town. I think these types of events and a lot of things that John is working on with the community garden, uh, Bill's in the historical society, and, and they're all on some of their own little projects. They do a great job. Uh, but uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm just doing everything I can along with the rest of these guys to make sure that we keep this town moving in the right direction and make sure we make it the best we can. Sir, how long can you be mayor? I can be mayor for two years and two terms each term, so a total of four years. If I was to, it's two years, and then if council was to reappoint the mayor, he can do another two years, so basically a four year term altogether, max. But you can skip them. Correct. 
Okay, I'm John Craywalker, I'm the vice mayor. Um, I'm real active in the church, you know, at the Church of the Brother, and I'm also real active with community dinner uh, with the Church of the Brother. I'm active with um, food pantry. Some people call me the food mafia, you know. <laughs> I sneak food in from Dayton at the Gospel Mission and, and help out, you know, the people who are uh, less fortunate. Uh, my big project, you know, each year I try to develop a big project, and this year my big project is uh, community gardens. And uh, part of the community gardens is healthy living, it is neighbors knowing neighbors, getting out, um, helping with a common cause. And, you know, like, you know, like I told you earlier the other day, too much, we have gone from the front door to the back door to the inside of the house to a fort. You know, uh, just walking today, just down Lincoln, you know, I couldn't count how many big folks I see, you know, the privacy fences. Uh, I know my neighbors, and I'm glad I know my neighbors. I kind of like them, so I hope they like me. Except for this one. But, uh, anyway, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm on city council because years ago I decided to get involved with the Tate Home property. And that sets back, you know, Gene's like going, wow, I remember that. That was a big controversy, and that's why I got involved with city. I used to cover it for the newspaper, and I said, this isn't working at all. And so I got involved with the city council. And also, I like to keep, and I'm a people person, you can tell because I want to help. I want to help. You know, if you're in trouble, you need help. I like to be able to help you. you know? uh, but otherwise, you know, you know, I think the city has grown, and, and I'm really happy where it's headed. And we'll probably say that at the end of it. Thank you, John. My name is Laura McLaughlin. I've been on council since 2002. Uh, I join in with Mike. I love this community. Uh, I only want to see what's best for it, what, what the citizens wish is what we all want to do on this council. That's what we would like to do. Uh, I think it's gone forward tremendously since I've been on council. We've had some stumbling blocks. Thanks to all these people over here, they continue doing great work for us. That's who actually make sure that everything, the day-to-day -day of everything the city is taken care of. So I thank them very much, all the staff, everyone. Uh, like Randy said tonight, we have somebody retiring after 34 years with the city. That's a long time. We have other people that are coming up that are in the same boat. They're between 30 and 34, 35 years. It says a lot for the city that if they've worked for us that long, and again, we're moving forward, uh, all of us are trying our best to do that. Uh, some of us have different ideas on how that should work out. Uh, we need to beautify our city more. It would really help if people would just pick up litter. If they go out walking or so forth, take a bag with you. Pick up litter. John does that all the time. I know I try and do that. I think most of us try and do that. <clears throat> try and keep our city clean. Uh, we like to use the word perception. Perception is a big situation with the city. If you perceive your city being a comfortable place to live and clean, that makes it that way. And all you young people, you really, if you live in the city, try and help us out, please. If you're out walking and so forth. So that's it for me. Thank you all for being here tonight, and hopefully you have some questions. Mr. Lowe. Thank you, sir. Um, I got involved with city council, early 70s. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. And uh, backed up a little bit, I'm sorry. And then I was asked to come back on the city council to uh, run for a seat in 2003, and I did. And I guess the reason so is because of how I feel about New Carolina. My wife's sitting out there. I come from a town in Pennsylvania that no longer exists. When I was a child growing up there, there was two service stations and a little grocery store. They're no longer there because no one cared. They do have a fire department, but that's it. It's houses are torn down and it's a mess. And I would never want to see that happen in New Carolina. And I wrote my wife a letter when I came out here to go to work that when we got married, this was before we were married, and told her that when we get married, we're going to live in New Carlisle. And I've been here since 1967. So I love New Carlisle. I like the people in New Carlisle. It's just a great place to live. You know, and that's why I've become involved. And uh, that's it. 
And these guys over here, as Lowell said, do a fantastic job. I once said that, you know, years back I'd go to bed at night and you just think, well, the city takes care of itself, you know. It does. There's people out there working every day, every hour, all week long to keep it going. Things we never see. So, Thanks, sir. We will move on to the administration side of the table tonight. Start off with the city manager, Randy Bridge, and let him introduce himself, and we'll move down the line for you. Hello. Uh, thanks, all for coming. My name is Randy Bridge. I'm the city manager. Um, before I get too much about myself, because I'm actually left to describe, I'm actually going to go from my left to my right and introduce the folks on this side of the table. Uh, this is Gene Collier. He's our clerk of council, and I'll leave it up to Gene to tell you a little bit about what he does. <laughs> As, yeah, as Randy said, I'm Gene Collier. I'm the clerk of council. I'm actually appointed by council as the clerk. I had the honor of replacing uh, Claire Miller, who was a, an icon in this town. I mean, 30 plus years as clerk of council. Uh, Claire was clerk of council actually during my 16 to 20 years involvement with the council, and I got to know him real well. And understood that the exceptional job he did as clerk and the one day when I saw saw him advertising in the paper that they knew I was looking for a clerk I thought it was a misprint because I thought you know Claire's always been the clerk uh, so I was uh, as being part of the city and part of the council in the years past uh, moved out of town about eight years ago but I still always kind of kept track of what was going on and wanted to get back involved and so I came in and I Council obviously gave me the honor of being clerk of council. What you see in front of me is the charter of New Carlisle. And if you haven't read this or looked at this, it's actually pretty, pretty simple to understand. It's pretty much in layman's terms. So you, they can actually get this on, on the website and you can ask for a copy of this. The reason I say that is because it's in our charter. It, it, it pretty much describes what the duties are of everybody who's involved on council. And as part of that also states what my duties are. And I'll just kind of sum it up. I mean, obviously, I attend all the council meetings. I record the meetings. Uh, I'm one of the few people who get the pleasure sometimes of listening to the meeting twice, sometimes three term, times, because so, it, it takes a lot, of, a lot of time outside of the meeting to sit and listen to the recordings and do the minutes and go back and check them to make sure you've covered all the critical points. Now, what you don't always see in the meeting is verbatim of everything that was said in the meeting. What I try to do is summarize it in the best form and fashion I can. And I will make sure that if something of critical importance is stated, I make sure it's in there. Because council members, if you notice from time to time, will sometimes say, hey, I know that you said back in April of 2014 you said this, and some it, they may go back and look at it. It may be in there, it may not be in there. So I play, I try to pay, pay attention to that, some critical stuff, but it's not verbatim. Uh, and some of my other duties are, is obviously I do the minutes. Like for example, tonight, I uh, the minutes were completed. The mayor signs off on the minutes. Council also gets a copy of the minutes prior to every meeting, so they can review that. And they all they obviously pass the minutes during every meeting. I will work hand in hand with uh, Mr. Bridge on the minutes. I mean, on, on the uh, council agenda. That that's probably the hardest part of the process is putting together the agenda because I'm not sitting in the office next to Mr. Bridge during the week. And being city manager is kind of a fluid process. It would be nice if he could say, "Hey." I know everything's going to happen by Wednesday afternoon, and we know what that agenda is. That's not always the case. No. And Mr. Bridge does a wonderful job of assisting with that agenda because he often knows what's going to be on there at the last minute that I may not know that's on there. So we work, try to work in hand in hand with that. Sometimes I wish the process was smoother, but, it, but it's difficult. Uh, I am that person that if you as Joe Citizen disagrees with an ordinance that's passed or with something that's current in the city, that you, you are that if you decide to go to the Board of Elections and issue a petition and you pass it around the community and you have people sign off on it and you want to introduce something on the ballot, legislation on the ballot, I am the person that that petition comes to and I review it, make sure it's signed off, make sure it's yeah, it's done correctly, and I will give you an opportunity to say, hey, you know, you need to take care of this, because once I take that baby to the Board of Elections, 
it is either certified or denied based on signatures, all that wonderful stuff. So I'm the person that would do that. I've been involved for going on two years now, close to two years with council, and I haven't, and it's good that I haven't had this opportunity to where there's been any petitions that have come through the, come through me and come through the Board of Elections because that normally means that council and everybody else is working to resolve issues and make it simple to where you don't have to have an election to resolve an issue that can be resolved in this meeting. So that's basically my function. Uh, that's what I do. Oh, one of the things, I work uh, closely with the newspaper and I will uh, put a, what's called a public notice, a legal notice in the paper that states what legislation was passed here in this meeting so the citizens who aren't here can see it and it also indicates on there what we will be discussing and voting on at the next meeting. So if somebody sees something and they think, oh, that's important, I need to be there, they at least have notice. And for example, this town hall meeting was advertised for about uh, three, three of those legal notices just to give people ample notice that we were having it. And if you, if you haven't seen that new Carlisle paper, it's usually in a box. You know, it's not colored or it doesn't stand out to you, but it's in there every two weeks for the people to see. And it's part of our legal ob obligation to do that. But I would encourage everybody to, especially those of you in high school, to get, get a copy of the charter and read it so you understand exactly how the city operates. Thank you. And real quick before we move on, Mr. Bridge, and Gene was also, I don't know what years, was also mayor of the city of Nicolau, too. Correct? Yes. Is it 18, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Four separate times in this town. Yeah. Okay, well, we're four separate times. We'll collapse <laughs> more in the future. <laughs> yeah, we will. Yeah. Yes, you can count on it. Yeah, absolutely. It's inevitable. You done, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. And again, this gentleman is fantastic to work with. I mean, many times we, I have to communicate him on Friday evening at seven o'clock, saying I forgot to put something in the ordinance, and it's this man who has to do all the work that I messed up. So, it's been great working with you this past year. I look forward to moving forward with you. Thank you. Awesome. And moving on, we're actually going to skip around. It's going to order of the agenda. We're going to actually skip this guy right here, Mr. Kitko. Uh, Ms. Harris is our finance director, and she's going to tell you a little bit what she does, but at this point in time, she'll also go over her yearly report with you as well. Go ahead with that, too. Yep. Hello, I'm Colleen Harris. I'm the finance director for the city of New Carlisle. Um, I've been here all, as of next week, two years. I was also the assistant years uh, previous, and I've got about 15 years in government financing. So I work with a great team of four ladies in the office, and we receive in all the revenue and the expenditures, which is equals to about $5 million each year. We work closely with the auditors every year for auditing standards and with the city manager and the service director and the others in our group. So I will go ahead and do a recap for last year. Um, for the finance report, then we had receded in total revenue for 2015, $5,071,000.83. Um, total expenditures for the year of 2015 was $4,926,758.43. Now, a little recap of that. We estimated our revenues for 2015 to only be 4.8 million, a little bit over that. And we did bring in a little over 5 million. We do take our best estimate on our uh, estimated revenues and expenditures to work when we do our budget. And in turn, the budget was approved last year for $5,388,000 for expenditures, and we only spent 4.9 million. So we did, we watched our expenditures very, very closely. Out of some of the expenditures, the total debt that the city paid was $738,905. That includes uh, debt service for the fire truck, general bonds facilities, and equipment loans. We had debt with Twin Creeks. We have the water treatment plant and the wastewater treatment plant all have uh, debt for sewer lines, water lines, extensions, um, et cetera. 
Again, that totaled $738,905 last year. Uh, income tax was really um, good to us with the passing of the police levy in July. We receded total for 2015 $1,091,282.65. The um, income tax is the most revenue that the general fund does receive for support. So in ending, um, it was a really good year. We did have a very tight budget when we started. We managed to hold down our expenditures. We paid all our debt payments, we paid all of our operating expense, employee salary, insurance, other obligations, and we increased our total funds by 154000 by the end of the year. So we were really proud of that. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Thank you. And moving on with our public service director, this is Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Howard Kitko. I'm the director of public service. Uh, I oversee water uh, division, the wastewater division, your streets, parks, and your cemetery. My job is basically to uh, oversee the infrastructure needs of the city to make sure that what we currently have in place uh, we keep uh, is maintained as well as possible for the size of our community um, which are either via some taxes or through usage rates which are through for your water usage or your sewer usage. Um, I've been here with the city since 2000 so I have a lot of history going back to when I used to work here as, a, uh, as an employee on the low level and I've worked my way up to this position so I've worked with the people who currently work underneath me which are there is 11 of them. Um, I have three superintendents that oversee those facilities for me. I report directly to Mr. Bridge with uh, the daily activities that we have going on. Um, also, with infrastructure needs, I currently seek for federal and state grants, which would be uh, CMAC funds, i.e. we use those for bike path, um, sidewalk work, any kind of work we do on like widening 235. And basically, when I say grants, I know those are basically your federal tax dollars or your state tax dollars coming back. Uh, we usually get awarded some Ohio Public Works Commission grant funds, which come from the bonds that are approved by the citizens in the state of Ohio that New Carlisle, amongst other um, entities in the state of Ohio, can uh, go after and uh, hopefully get awarded for these projects. Um, and then one last one is CDBG. It's another grant that we usually get on an annual or a semi-annual basis to work in our low to moderate income areas. We currently have a street levy, and when I was talking about infrastructure, streets are um, outside of my normal utilities, my number one priority to get the streets is safe and keep the potholes off of them. The levy brings in approximately $135,000. With that being said, I am currently uh, out for bids for our Edgebrook Avenue project for $213,000. And that is just basically where a machine comes in, scratches the surface, and lays new asphalt, a little bit of curb and gutter, uh, and some adjustment and manholes. It's not a whole lot of work. It will probably get us um, 10 plus to 15 plus years on that road, but it's not like a full reconstruction estimate, which was almost $3 million to do just that one road. So with the levy dollars, we stretch them as far as we can uh, to get as much work as we can uh, done. And so with that being said, you know, I'll, I'll still try to get those uh, federal and state grants that come in and help offset our local tax dollars. It does take time to build that street levy fund up to be able to do a project like this. Um, with the 135000 annual, that means it takes almost two years to do one street. And we do use some of those funds for uh, patching, for some of those basin repairs, um, some of the uh, other jobs that we do that are small out on the roads. So we currently strive every day to um, make the money stretch on what infrastructure that I, uh, that I need to keep in um, or keep out of disrepair. So um, with that, that is all I have. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bird, if you'd like to move on down the line. Thank you. And moving on with our uh, fire EMS department, Chief, Chief Steve Preston. Good evening. Um, before going into the year review, my name is Steve Trusty. I'm Fire Chief. I've been with the Fire Division for almost four years. Uh, in December, I was blessed with being appointed in the position of Fire Chief. 
Uh, basically, my job is all fire and EMS operations, day-to-day -day operations for the city of New Carlisle and the township of Elizabeth Township that contracts us for personnel only to run their department. Um, we have, we're what's called a combination department. We have paid for call personnel, then we also have part-time personnel. Uh, the stations are manned 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, before we go into that, so the crews can get so the crew can go back to their their duty at the station. Uh, this is firefighter paramedic Jim Jordan and firefighter EMT Garth Musgrove. Both of them work part time for us, but both of them also are career firefighters with other departments. Uh, Jen is with Springfield uh, City of Springfield, and Garth is with Wright Patterson Air Force Base Fire Department. What they I had them bring this in tonight. If you want to know what twenty-seven thousand dollars looks like in a little package, that's it. That's $27,000 of technology and equipment. We were able to purchase it this year for a little over $22,000 with buybacks and uh, price cuts for us. Uh, but I'm going to turn it over to let Jen explain it to you what it is and what its capabilities are and what we use it for. It's a cardiac monitor that if a person then is, in, is in full arrest, they can shock the patient if need be and bring them back. It also can uh, work as a pacemaker. Uh, if the person needs to be, if their heart needs to be paced, they can, it can work that way also. This model also does selfless CPR, um, just with the rate that we use CPR at it can tell you whether or not you're going the correct rate of compression. Yeah, tell us what okay. they're going to do. Chief Trustee, uh, Mr. Lindsay wanted to volunteer. <laughs> I think he was volunteering somebody else. <laughs> he told me earlier he would love to do that. He doesn't hurt that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've only heard you the first couple of seconds. I'll a little bit. Good. Anything else, Chief Trustee? Uh, I need it. No, yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. So, thank you, thank you both. It's been great to hear you. That's remarkable. They could probably restart you, Randy. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hey, Howard. Um, the year, the year review for 2015 for the uh, for the fire division. Fire division answered 1,202 EMS calls in the city, 126 calls in Elizabeth Township, uh, 200, 206 fire related calls, and 48 fire related calls in Elizabeth Township. We had 20 responses where mutual aid was given to the city from other fire departments. 
we were, there was 26 responses where we gave mutual aid to different departments of other cities. Um, our, in the city, our average shoot time for the year, shoot time for us means how long it took us to get out the door. Uh, our average shoot time was less than, less than two minutes. Our average response time to the scene was less than six minutes. Now our average retrieve more time to the closest uh, medical facility was 22 minutes. The only reason for that is how far away the hospitals are away from the city. Uh, there was a lot of improvements done to Station 52 this year. Uh, the training room itself was re completely remodeled, hallways painted. 90% of the work done inside the station was done by division personnel. Uh, we had a new pad poured in the front of the station, which was very nice. We needed it badly. Uh, it has the big 52 printed in the center of it. The division also purchased uh, new gear lockers for the crews for their gear out in the bay so they have a secure place to put their equipment. The division replaced all the SCBA bottles for the air packs and for the spare bottles that were that are on the apparatus. The division that we also started a new inspection program for the uh, city, fire safety and fire inspection program. Uh, basically is set up to where we can try to visit each business in the city once a year to do a uh, fire safety inspection for them plus all code, also code enforcement. And Basically, that's about it for the year. Thank you, Chuck. Steve Trustee. Uh, excellent report. Thanks for the demonstration, Ralph. You got a, you got, a, you got something for show and tell because you just. Yes, it's got. Can you talk about? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get. Yeah, you want to. Next is uh, the sergeant member of the Clark County Sheriff's Department. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mayor. I'm Ralph Underwood. I'm a sergeant at the Clark County Sheriff's Office and was appointed the uh, uh, police administrator for the city of New Corral about eight years ago. And it's a pleasure to work up here. We've really had some tough times. Uh, we are still trying to rebuild from the two deputies we lost last year. And it just takes time. Uh, one of our other problems was we, we were behind on buying some equipment. Um, we're with the council and the city manager. We're getting back up to date to where we should be. Um, the bicycles and those sorts of things. Um, we are, are diligently doing the best we can. Um, not everyone's happy with law enforcement, especially if you're cited uh, or you're not happy with the outcome of um, the, the theft or incident at home. Um, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer those questions. Uh, my office number, it's a 937 number, it's 521-2103. Uh, we will take every step to follow through with what your complaint is or what your need is. Uh, I'd like to see us get on a personal touch with me and the sheriff's office. So. You shouldn't be afraid to talk to us. We're watching lots of things on television right now, and sometimes we are portrayed as the bad person. Uh, I'm not saying we don't make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Uh, I've seen some mistakes that should have never happened, and that's why we, this time, have trained everyone in New Corral, uh, has taken a six to eight week course before they're even put in a patrol car. So uh, safety is our biggest concern for us uh, and for the citizens. Uh, generally, we assist the fire department quite a bit and try to patrol. Now, from time to time, people say, well, I haven't seen a police car over here or I haven't seen one over here. Well, you probably won't because when we're patrolling this time of night, we're not real loud. We're trying to catch the guy that's in the cars and things. But they're out there and we should be no less than three minutes away from them. Um, unfortunately, we still have a few hours that is not covered in New Corral, and all of those hours are covered by the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Um, in time of need, we can get people up here pretty fast. So this is a very safe community. We have our issues and our problems, but overall, it's a safe place to live. And with that, I'm going to go into the report for the second time. <laughs> As I said earlier, if you look at the first page, it's the 2012 to 16 totals. We're 
for new corral in January. This, this is what you want to hear. Prime is down for January this year compared to, excuse me, four years in the past. I hope we can continue that uh, for the remainder of the year. That'd be wonderful. The next page is actually uh, reports taken in new corral. Uh, for the last four years, we only go to 50, 2015, but uh, as you see, we've been up and down a little bit. Uh, that's typical, uh, but that gives you an idea of how many reports we're taking a year. So we're taking uh, about one and a little over one report a day. The next page is uh, stats for uh, various years, well, I should say various, 2012. 13, 14, and 15 on certain crimes. Uh, for the audience, uh, our attempted suicide rate is up some. Our burglaries are down quite a bit. Um, domestic violence. Domestic violence is, is it's not as bad as it has been, but it needs to improve greatly. Drug offenses. Uh, Looks like we, we've had a year which in 2012 where it wasn't that bad, and now we're back up a little bit in 2015. Um, it, it is so hard to catch the drug person. It's not like you think, and it's not like you see on TV. Um, sometimes our drug unit spends months before they can get inside some place to, to try to make a buy or get enough information to actually prosecute them. And that's not just a problem in Nuclear Isle, that's a problem throughout our country right now. Stolen vehicles, you know, we're up a little bit in 2015. We had 12 of them. And thefts, um, I'd like to see us a little lower because in 2014 we were down to 92 thefts and we're back up to 115 thefts this year. Um, and that's where our neighborhood watch comes in, that's where you come in. I'm amazed. I've been here at the sheriff's office for mm, 27, going on 27 years, and daily people tell me I did. I don't know if I should call the police or not. If you see someone going through a car, doesn't have to be yours, or a house, call us. That's actually a 911 call, um, and. We will respond as fast as we can. We like catching the bad guy. It makes us look good. And it makes you feel better. So that's what we're here for. Uh, we've had some weapons issues. Uh, so th this is arrest with weapons. Felony assaults. Unfortunately, in 2015, that was, that was up quite a bit. Um, and a felony assault is a severe hit or punch that might send you to the hospital or using a, uh, a weapon of some sort, um, ball bat, throwing something at you. If you get seriously hurt, that is a felony. Now, just plain old assault, I guess smack somebody in the face or push them, something like that. Um, but our felony assaults are up. Our misdemeanor assaults, uh, from 2012, there were 38. In 2015, we ended up with 51. So that is the uh, conclusion of our report on that. And the last page is a comparison of New Palau and the townships. Um, as you will see, New Palau, for per population, is right in line with Mad River Township and Moorfield Township, uh, Bethel Township, which is right in our area, uh, it is hot. <coughs> and maybe, I can't think the sure contributing factor is they don't have a police staff like we do. So people are aware of that, and that's where they take their crime to. If they know they can get away with it or think they can, that's what they're going to do. If you look at Springfield Township, that's just a very vast, large area actually surrounds the whole city of Springfield. And uh, you get a lot of crime coming from out of the city there. Um, that concludes my report. If there's any questions, I'll answer them.
Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. I just want to support you guys do an amazing job. Uh, thank you, everybody. We're glad to have you guys back in town. Thank you for your presence. Uh, one more thing on, on Sheila Cruz and uh, what's the other lady's name? Rachel. 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 The, uh, I think Dale did the story on it, and I've been talking about it before, about them getting back and, and being real personal with the public as far as stopping by and, and visiting with people. That's, that's a great thing to have in this community. And it's, it's great to be able to do a story on it. You know, we had a lot of people comment about that, so it's, it's a great thing to have. It, it is, and we hopefully will continue that with our other two coming on board. Definitely. Thank you. Mr. Bridge. Well, thank you. Well, that means me. I'm last. And, uh, well, I'm Randy. I'm the city manager. Um, basically, as it was stated earlier, I'm responsible for all aspects of city operation. It all falls on my shoulders. Um, so it is an honor to be a city manager in, in the great city of uh, New Carlisle. Um, I have to sit, I have to thank our staff and our council, our administration. When I say staff, I'm talking about the hourly people that you see out there actually digging the holes. When I say administration, it's members of management, those who sit on this table with me, and obviously our council who, who um, makes the decisions on the legislative side of, of the city. Um, without without these people the city wouldn't be in the shape that it's in to be, to be frank um they are the real hero, heroes it's not me um another big aspect of of having a good team that surrounds you is my transition from planning director to the city manager was a was a tough time the city was going through some pretty bad times um so when i took over there's a lot of high profile things that needed to be addressed quickly um, without Mr. Kiko's ample years of experience that never would have happened or Mrs. Harris's knowledge of the budget, budget like the back of her hand, none of the outcomes would have been what they are now if, if these two wasn't in place, as well as our hourly crew as well. And if you're wondering how many people the city actually employs, we have 18 full-time people. Um, we have about 40 part-time, that includes the fire and EMS, and then a slew of seasonals that they either help us cut the grass in the summertime or they man the pool that will be open this summer. So there's a lot of responsibility that not just falls on my shoulders, but also these administrator shoulders as well. Um, so I just want to take a minute to talk about some of the big things that happened over the year, um, where we're currently at, and then what the, where the city needs to be in the future. When I was pondering this outline over the, over the weekend, Obviously, the biggest thing that happened to the city over the past year that put us in a position we have now is the passage of that 0.5% income tax levy. Uh, Councilman Lindsay, you did a fantastic job of getting that word out. So everybody in this room and everybody watching on TV and everybody at their house should be thankful for you for doing that and, and giving your time and knowing that the city could do a lot better than we did. So without your help, I don't think we'd be there now. So again, thank you for doing that. Without that levy, the city would have been in severe, severe financial outlook. There's something that we call fiscal watch. And once that happens, it's not a good thing. Um, you don't ever want to go into fiscal watch. that just says you don't have money. It could say you don't have the people right to manage it. Uh, the state would come over and do your books for you. So nobody wants that. It's equivalent to the state taking over your school. You know, um, so you want to be able to do that on your own. We would have been in financial watch without the passage of that levy, with no questions asked. Um, we would have had to cut way more services than what we had originally cut. You know, so looking forward, because of that police levy, we have now our four deputies back, which was promised on the campaign. Um, we just purchased a new 2016 police cruiser. That is a beautiful car. Me and Mr. Kiko went down and got it. I'm excited to see it in action when we get it here. And again, it's going to be a reminder to our citizens, this is your tax dollars at work. Um, it's very paramount that we monitor and watch very closely how we spend the police levy money over these next five years. At the end of the five years, the police levy goes right back on the ballot. If the citizens don't think that this side of the table and that side of the table is doing their due diligence with that money, there's no guarantee it's going to pass again. So what we're going to strive to do is watch every penny. We need to build up almost a rainy day fund within the police levy. So if year six doesn't, it doesn't pass, 
we have enough money to get us through that year before we can get it passed again. We don't want to have to reduce back down to two deputies. We've come so far with getting it back to four and then getting our department um, better equipped just to take 70 steps back at, at the end of year five. So we will do our due diligence as well and how we spend that. I know bike, the bike training has already been up and it goes in with the community policing effort that Sheriff Kelly um, had wanted to institute. And I agreed upon it because I think it's a very effective form of policing when you're at a community of this size. And especially coming from what we were, and that was two deputies, and then you're trying to pass the levy. You know, when all the misconceptions about mismanagement of money, it, there was never no mismanagement of money. We just simply didn't have any to manage. So, you know, um, moving forward with that, I think the bike training is a good way to like put that deputy back into the citizen space. You know, saying, "Hey, hi, I'm Deputy Allender. I'm your deputy." And that goes a long way when it comes to, comes to your citizens and how they respect you, respect your deputies. Um, also because of the police levy, our crime rates are down. I know Sergeant Underwood just went through this fantastic presentation about the crime rates, but we do see that trend and it is going down. And it's a direct result of not only the number of deputies that we have, but who the deputies we have that are on here. I haven't got really to know the other, the other two besides Deputy Allender, Deputy Cruz are really our first two <coughs> steps and say, yes, I want to go to New Carlisle. I want to start making a difference when so many other deputies, quite frankly, did not want to come out here. Them to have made a significant difference in how our police are perceived in this community. I know I brought up about him, um, them two deputies stopping at houses. There's pictures floating around of them with little kids. So that's the whole point of what community policing is. And you see the positive effects from it. Um, hopefully we can get our crime numbers to keep on going down. I mean, that's the goal with everyone in this room. We may have different opinions on certain things, you know, whether it be a 20 foot area or no smoking at all. But at the end of the day, everyone on that side, this side in this room, we all want to want the same goal. And that is a better city. We got to work together to get there. I also want to talk about the fire investigation. I don't want to spend too much time on it because it's just a negative, negative encounter, but it did happen. And I think it is warranted to discuss it. And this is one of the very first things that came into my lap when I was made city manager. Um, and it was a very difficult, stressful time for myself and everybody who was involved in that. Um, it came about because there's constant controversy surrounding our former fire chief, whether he was overspending, creating a low morale within the, within the department, putting his friends in charge, which is something you never want to do, or letting equipment expire. So we had an anonymous letter be sent to some council members and myself. Um, and we decided to do a fire investigation through mixed opinions of whether have that opinion, uh, have the investigation or not, who to do it, how much to pay for it. But we did call, and I think it was an executive session, I do believe. It was an open meeting. I can't recall, so it was an executive session. We decided to go ahead and go with the fire investigation. The results, again, of the results of the investigation were also mixed reviews. And eventually led to a public meeting on what to do next with the fire department. And a large number of our current staff and the public voiced their opinions on the current state of the department. It was very uncomfortable for all parties, whether it be council, whether it be administration, whether it be citizens, whether it be staff that was on that fire department. It was very uncomfortable. But we got together in this room and we talked about it. We aired every, all, everybody aired their concerns. But that's how you get things done in government setting, is you have to come together despite your dissenting opinions and come up with a common goal. So the outcome of that fire investigation, well, the former chief resigned. Um, he left on his own accord. And then following him were the two people that he had put in command. During that time, I had asked Assistant Chief Ritter to take command of the fire department while we searched for a new uh, fire chief. He did an exceptional job at doing so. And uh, again, I'd just like to extend my thank thanks to him. That also led to the permanent hire of a new fire chief. I could not be happier with the selection of, of Chief, chief Trustee. During his inter interview process, he really stood out as an ethical leader and uh, also a leader that would be respected by his staff, which was crucial in that turning point. We needed someone like that. All the candidates were, all the candidates who interviewed for the fire chief, they were qualified. 
quite frankly, they were overqualified for the job. It was a very tough decision, but in the end, um, and as time has proven, I think the best choice was made. The morale of the firehouse, once very low and detrimental, is bounced back up to, to very acceptable levels. Um, and I use, hold on, sorry. <laughs> His staff does like working for the chief. I've talked to some of them. He's been very well received. Um, I think he's a, the perfect example who's someone who, who's in charge and he knows he's in charge, but he still can relate to the folks that are underneath him in a very approachable way. And when you are in charge and you are responsible for a lot of people, being approachable is key to that. Um, and I think he has done a great job at um, letting his staff know that he is there with an open door policy and he will help them in any way, shape, or form that he can. For the planning side of things, and this, this is one of the things I was very excited to talk about, and I don't know how many people with the history of the city can account for this, but from my understanding, and I've done some research back, this year has been the biggest year of economic development the city's had on a record in quite some time. 2015 saw two major projects and then one smaller project. <coughs> And I wanted to point out the smaller project because it does show there is signs of life in the city at all levels of all the businesses that we have here. Van Crest has invested $5 million in the city of New Carlisle. That's a lot of money. Um, they will be doing a 35,000 square foot addition to their current facility. And when I say Van Crest, that is actually Dayview of New Carlisle, right up on 235. Um, when they get done with their 35,000 square foot uh, addition, they will have about 90 beds, 16 of which will be skilled rehab and then 35 for assisted living. Speedway, we've all seen that project. We've seen the existing building get torn down and the new one put up rather quickly and efficiently. That was a $3 million investment here in the city. Um, they redeveloped a major intersection and they also demoed some blighted structures. Speedway is very busy. I think if you've been in there during their peak times, you're waiting in line probably back by the door. That's a good sign for us. That shows that our citizens go in there. They, they spend their money. Um, that is also a way for them to gauge sales, obviously. And one of the big components of that is their food sales. And people may think, why am I bringing up food sales? Well, because the better the food sales, the more likelihood that's gonna get converted into a full-fledged speedy cafe where you go in and you order your things on a screen and somebody makes it fresh for you. Um, so that was our goal from the get-go with that speedway. I was kind of hoping it would be from the start, but they had scaled back their plans to make it what is now is a grab-and-go store. Um, I've been speaking with the manager. He has put in for more labor hours so he can get more staff. Uh, but he is confident that it will be converted into a speedy cafe. Um, he wouldn't give me a time frame, but here probably within the next year or two. Um, Artie Holder is a smaller business in town, but I wanted to bring it up. Mr. Holder relocated his corporate headquarters to the city of New Carlisle a few years back. If you're not familiar with what that building is, it's the building just by the um, cemetery down here on 235. Gorgeous building on the outside, looks modern. He uh, put in plans last year for 8,700 square foot addition on the back. That's going to tell us that his business is expanding. He also expanded his paving surface um, to accommodate his growth as well. So Mr. Holder again has, one, thank you for relocating your business here to the great city of New Carlisle, but it's this city that's helping him grow. So we always want to give thanks to Mr. Holder for that. City finances. City Finance has come a long way. What was supposed to be the ending balance of 1231 of 15, $8,514. All other funds, wastewater, water, et cetera, et cetera, $921,637. Well, where we are now, actual ending balance for 1231 15, again, we were supposed to have $8,514. We ended up with $169,319. All the other funds, what were supposed to be the 921,637, ended up being $1.5 million, actually closer to $1.6 million. And where we plan to be, 
estimating end of balance at the end of this year, 1231-16, dollars All other funds, about $1.4 million. Finances in this city have come a long way. I it attest to the staff we have working here, the people managing the money, and a slew of other things. Future of the city, Twin Creeks, vacant lots, they're us, they're ours. That was awarded to us in what we call land re reutilization program. Um, it is a long drawn out process. Anyone who wants a great read, look up Ohio Revised Code <laughs> section 5722 and let me know what you think of it. Um, there's a lot of components that need to be correctly and legally done with that. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, the city has an interest, interested buyer who wants to buy all of them in the first 20, I mean, all 26 in one shot. That's awesome. We're going to let them do it. The potential goal with that, obviously, is he, he's going to be building new homes on that, on those parcels, and that's going to expand our tax base. And that's exactly what we need to be done with that. New city offices. <coughs> as earlier, if you remember correctly, <coughs> uh, mentioned up Van Crest and their big expansion. Excuse me. With that, Bell Manor Nursing Home right here on Pike Street, all their patients will be transferred to the new facility, and then the city will be gifted the existing Bell Manor for our city offices. It's a very large building. We currently pay about $1,800 a month where we're currently at. Um, with that, we do plan on moving our police department to the new city building instead of having them next door to the fire station where we want them down by us. Um, the goal with that is it is a large facility. We really need to be creative with getting regional agencies in there to help us take up some of that space, to charge them a little bit of rent. My perfect world, I would love Clark State to come in there and, and give some continuing education classes, uh, maybe some basic genetic classes, the English 101s, the histories 101s that everybody has to do their first year. Um, but also, too, I think that we have some of our adult, adult population that need those continuing education classes, you know, to learn how to properly use a computer, to learn how to properly type. And I know for some of you young kids, that may seem like, whoa, what are you talking about? But that is a big issue with some of our older population. You can't work at McDonald's right now without knowing how to type and use a computer. So it is definitely a need that we need to have in our city, you know. Um, and that's just going to help us get our underemployed employed. Last thing I got on there, it just says Madison School. Oh, it says it's still there. Ugh. Um, <laughs> I'm going to reach out to Clark County Development for land bank demolition um, money and fingers crossed on that. Um, that's all I have. So if anyone wants to add anything or bring up something I possibly missed, please do so. Well, what I was thinking was thank you, Randy, for the report and everything you do. Uh, on here, we've got four and five, uh, four uh, comments from. Mayor and Council, um, I was oh, I was thinking of having the audience ask questions and then we could finish it up. But uh, Mr. Law, I have a question, a comment. No, I just had a comment. Uh, Randy, that's probably one of the best reports I've ever heard since I've been on Council. That was awesome. Well, thank you. And I, I think something that we've all left out, and I should have brought it up and I didn't, and all of that is possible because of the people who choose to live and work in Uganda. Absolutely. The 5,800 citizens. Uh, I know, you know, I can pick someone out there that I can see that works outside of New Carolina and pays 2% tax someplace else. But they choose to live here they pay tax there and here as well. And I know that for a fact because I'm talking about my wife. And, uh, but we choose to live here. And there's a whole lot of people that choose to live here. It's, we thank every one of them. That's what made it happen. Sure. Not going to have a city without citizens. Absolutely, and there, there's some fantastic citizens. They run more complain just like we do, but we love it here. Thank you. All right, you, is that okay with you guys? We let them ask questions. And we can finish it up. Okay, so everybody in the audience here, the kids, uh, the adults here, if you guys have questions or comments, now would be the time. I, I, I always stress this, and it's important. If you ever have questions about how something's done in New Carlisle or, or the way things are done, and I'm not saying that you can't get the right information on social media or newspapers, but the best source is to come to a meeting and find out. If you ask, 
you know, ask Randy directly or Howie directly or, you know, something like that. So if you have any type of question, now would be the time to get it while you have the answer while we have everybody here. So this is your time. Any questions? Oh, we got one. Uh, Sir, could you go? Could you go to the podium, the podium so we can? I can pick you up and hear you. There's a recorder back there, so you got to speak into the recorder. Okay, so you sir, man, so I don't know that. I think. And certain things with it, like for instance, this is for a house, or this is for a business, or this is for like a big factory. Um, and so, if a particular property is zoned for something, then I can take that property and sell to somebody else as long as they what they're going to put into that property classifies as that zoning. They can do whatever they want. Some people will say, um, this business used to be here, but then this business opened up. Why did you guys let that happen? Well, one of the things is, is that you have a, a, a private property. If you don't own the city property, private property, and you want to sell that to somebody else. So if um, I want to take the what a dog, and I don't want to run it anymore, and then I want to lease it out to somebody else who's going to open up and do the same thing, that's no different than if I say I want to take my house and sell it to somebody else. So really glad, glad, very grateful that somebody stepped up to reopen a great institution in the town. And that's not because of the work that we did. That's because uh, New Carlisle Assistants were stepping up to keep an institution alive. So whoever did that, I want to thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? Please go to the podium, please. I have a question for our finance director, Colleen. Yes. Um, our total revenue is over five million dollars per year. Is that correct? Am I looking at these numbers right? Yes. I am just curious. All of that income does not come from our city income tax, and I'm sure people would be interested in knowing approximate percentages, just approximate ballpark ideas. Where else does our money come from that we operate the city with? Um, that's a very good question. The income tax does relate to probably around the upper 70 percent of the general fund. The rest of the income we receive from um, other taxes, from the county, from the cigarette tax, from license property tax, tax license yes, tax. The water plant brings revenue for the bills that we put out for your water service, the sewer also. The uh, money that the fire department brings in, is, these are all included in these totals for the ambulance runs and for the um, other items that you do. There's a lot to it with our different Correct. funds, but it's a big combination. Okay, because it seems like all we ever hear about is the income tax. And I knew there was more to it. I just wasn't quite sure where it all came from. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good Any other questions from the audience members? All right. Well, uh, we're down to, I guess, closing uh, comments from any of the council members or anyone else on the administration side. So if anybody has any comments at this time? Questions? Not at all. I just thank everybody for being here. Uh, not a whole lot of you, but that's, I think, a good thing. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes. right. That is true. It would be because they was upset about something. That's what we see the room for when they're upset. Yeah. And, you know, that there wasn't a lot, I think that's good. And last but not least, John, you started out by saying you would help anybody need help. Yeah. I could use 30 bucks for two days. I just like one more something I wanted to say real quick before we wrap up. Is to the, all the, the young kids in the audience, and I know that it doesn't sound interesting to you guys, is to get involved in the co op. Mm -hmm. I know you guys have your mind set on music or whatever it is you guys are into nowadays. I'm not. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, when everyone up here is involved with something. You know, Bill helped out the levy, Ethan's done the tree lighting, Bill does historical, uh, historical society, and so on down, down the line. And there's, I, I don't think there's anything more, more gratifying than you know, being part of this town and accomplishing something for its greatness. So yeah. just keep that in mind. And, and if you get free time, you know, try to get involved with something. It's, it's really important maybe to stay involved with your thing. Yeah. So. We'll see. Amen. And use a license bureau in town. <laughs> time you yeah, we need to get that. Not Anybody else? Before we wrap it up, any questions? <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Or Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, he is. I just want to add what my 
Mike said, um, number one, always looking for people to help out on the Heritage of Flight. The Heritage of Flight is one of the biggest events that this city's ever put on. Unfortunately, it's going by the wayside as far as volunteers. They need volunteers. Big time need volunteers. In fact, uh, I want to volunteer again this year, so I'm volunteering. <laughs> That is such a wonderful event, and that cruise in that we have. I mean, we've had over 800, 900 cars here at a time when the weather is decent. If we have good weather, it'll be a great event. So please come out, but also we're definitely looking for volunteers. Is that correct, Mike? Always, always. Yeah, these festivals, I, I, you might know the answer to this, one of you guys might know it. But from what I hear, uh, I'm not a huge history buff, but the Heritage of Flight is now the longest running festival in, in the state history of New Carlisle. We're going on, this will be our 12th or 12th year. And, you know, it brings in thousands of people. We've got, you know, the, this huge cruise in we added, uh, thanks to Jerry Medock, uh, the uh, Blessing of the Badges on Sunday, which was a huge turnout. We had Terrify do a, a real low flyover. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing festival. So, yeah, volunteers are always needed. You know, we're, none of us are getting any younger on the committee. So, if, if we could actually get a year where we get excellent weather every day, the first, it'll the, be first six, the first six years were gorgeous, and then right. after that, it went downhill. But, you know, as the years have gone on, participation's got better. There was, one year, it was warmer, there was one year it was warmer for the New Year's Eve ball drop than it was during the festival. <laughs> That was two years ago. It was snowing. It was. It made an impact on the uh, pancake breakfast. It was actually right. snowing. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, volunteer. Uh, if, if we moved up to July, it would be warm. No, it's snow. It would be snow. It's snow. It's snow. It's snow. Yeah, probably. So, uh, anything else that I want to say before we wrap this up? It's getting late. We apologize. Crime uh, Watch this year is going to be different. It's going to yes. be out in the parking lot of the Church of Brothers. Am I right, Carol? And it's going to be almost like a special. national night out. National night out. That's right. And, uh, so and when is it, John? August something? Yeah. Second. 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 Oh, I just wanted to see if you knew. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, John, make sure you get a firm date so that we can make sure we get it in the uh, metro. It's August 2nd. August 2nd. From 6 to 9. We'll get it in there so it'll be in there for a while. But that's all I'm excited about because it's going to be outside in the parking lot, almost in the middle of town. We got entertainment, you have food, you have entertainment, and some other, and also exhibits. Where you getting that food, John? Exhibits. Yes. You're going to have some demonstrations this year? I also. Ask Carol. I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to have some demonstrations this year. Please, <laughs> <laughs> Adam. All right, well, you're going to wake us up, everybody. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. And we hope to come back to you know, some future council meetings. Everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you.